They didn't have an Irish international during the, the war years, but they had an Irish close. And Raymond and I won that one year. And then after the war, Wimbledon in those days used to invite two pairs uh, from Ireland. Uh, and Raymond and I were nominated by the ILTA to be one pair. And the other pair was Cyril Kemp and George McVie. I don't know whether you ever met George McVie or not, but uh, he was quite a character. He, he played tennis, cricket, hockey, and squash for Ireland. And uh, he was a, he was quite a character as, as well. But um, uh, I, I well I had never flown. We went to Wimbledon in '46, the four of us, on the old DC three, mm -hmm. uh, the old plane sort of. It was at an angle. You got in, you walked upstairs, so to speak. And a uh, twenty-one seater only, and of course your nobility, you're treated uh, as a, an important person in those days in the plane, not just another sausage going through the machine. And, world travel hadn't reached by that stage. So we flew in this old lead C3. Uh, two hours it took to London. Mm. And I can't remember whether we landed at Croydon or Northolt. My memory is that we landed in Croydon on the grass strip. Now, but it may have been Northolt. Heathrow hadn't even been thought of at that stage. Now, London after the war was a sorry sight. And I don't think my first impression of London was awful, and I think it always in influenced me afterwards. I didn't, never liked the place. Um, the bomb damage everywhere, nothing. It had a coat of paint for about 10 years. Food rationing was still there. The people on the whole were very rude. and. Uh, However, Wimbledon had resurrected itself for the first year after the war, and Raymond had warned me, you know, that it was very much nobody social kind of thing in, in, in the British society, that you wore a suit, it didn't matter what the heat was, and the temperature when we were there was awful. <laughs> and there were we with our suits on, and our ties on, and we were a bit, a bit horrified, particularly Raymond. On about the third day, so the temper rebelled and he wore no neck shirt and no jacket. <laughs> but um, Raymond and I, we were beaten in the first round by uh, a couple of good Frenchmen. Uh, but that was my sort of sole experience. But London, I say, was, 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 it was a sad sight. It was a great experience. And I remember say everything was, was rationed. George McVie had, had a, a can of sugar with him, which he took everywhere. And I remember, oh yes, there was one thing. We were in, because we came from Ireland, we were in the overseas dressing room. Whereas there were a lot of good English players and they were always, they were all in what was known as the cannon fodder <laughs> dressing room. So and you were the elite. <laughs> and we were the elite and it didn't go down very well. Yes. <laughs> but George lost his tin of sugar. And there we were in the elite changing room. All the best tennis players in the world searching their lockers <laughs> and everywhere for George's blasted tin of sugar. <laughs> Did you stay for the full fortnight? No. Um, uh, I had booked in only for a week, I did, we, a week of holidays, of course, don't forget, we were all very much amateurs in those days, paid our own way. I, I don't think the ILTA did anything except nominate us and say bye-bye. Um, but um, Raymond stayed a few days. I had to ring up the chief accountant to know could I have a few days extra leave and I was told I couldn't. So I made out I was very important, <laughs> which I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. 
So I came home after we got in, but uh, it was very trying. The heat was awful, and we were in a hotel in the summer in the centre of the city, and uh, there was a smog really, and noise and heat. Very difficult to sleep at night. So it, it was quite an experience. The food was difficult to say. I remember the one and only time I had wheel. So that was really our experience of Wimbledon. Mm. But uh, again, when we think that the, the one match we played, I think Raymond won his service all the time, and I lost mine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> these, they, they were t these two fellows were much too good for us. Yeah. But it was a wonderful experience to see the top players. Mm. Still would have known some of them, and indeed. Uh, DuPont, uh, she wasn't DuPont then, she was Margaret Osborne. Uh, Pauline Betts won that year, as far as I remember, I think she played Louise Brough in the final. And I forgot, the men's was won by an outsider, I think, Petra from France, which after the war was really quite incredible. But he was an enormous fellow those days, about six foot six, tremendous service. Mm. I went back as a spectator a few times afterwards with Raymond. 